Okay, it is Sunday, November 10th, 2024, and this is going to be the election 2024 wrap-up show, at least for me. Because from this point forward, talking about this stuff, we might be more talking about the uh, prelude to, to a second civil war. Now, Unless you've been under a rock or in complete denial, Trump was declared president-elect on Tuesday night. Technically, Wednesday morning because it was after midnight Eastern time. Once they declared Pennsylvania for Trump, it was over. He had sufficient electoral college votes to clinch the presidency. Uh, the last count that I heard, it looks like Trump has 315 electoral votes. And he won the popular vote by over 15 million votes reportedly. Now, some of the, in, the uh, info that has been getting reported on who voted for Trump, who voted for Harris. Now, over 50% of the votes that went for Trump are from Gen X. Generation X was the primary supporter for Donald Trump. So once again, my generation gave a big fuck you to the establishment, told them to pound sand. Now, there's a lot of people saying that, oh, it's Gen Z that drug it over the line. It's Gen Z that won it for President Trump. Gen Z reportedly, over 60% of the votes cast by Gen Z were for Harris. And the actual numbers of votes that I've seen for Trump, it looked like around 20 to 22% of Trump's votes were coming from Gen Z. So Trump's victory really can be considered a Gen X victory. We've done what we've always done. We stood up against the establishment. We've always questioned authority. And we voted for Trump. Now, granted, not every Gen Z person voted for Harris. A bunch did vote for Trump. But you can't say that the election was only won because of Gen Z. Gen Z being the ones that are in their uh, 20s right now and I think early 30s. That generation, I've complained about them in the past for pretty obvious reasons. This is a generation that I've seen at work where 9 out of 10 of them, if not 19 out of 20 of them, just do not want to work. They just expect everything to be handed to them. When you do get one who is conservative, who is hardworking, it's great to have them around, but they're so rare. It's just, it's almost less than 1%. And I've, I've heard people say that uh, Gen Z is the most conservative in history. How can Gen Z be the most conservative generation in history when demographically, you look at the numbers of what is the percentage of homosexual and trans in society in the United States, it is 3% on average. But when you look at the breakdown in Gen Z, who identify as gay, lesbian, whatever, trans, in Gen Z the numbers are between 40 to 60% identify as gay and trans. They also identify as supporting authoritarian versions of governance, whether it is communism, democratic socialism, or national socialism, aka Nazism. So how can you consider that generation to be the most conservative in history? I'm just throwing that out there. And I know that's going to piss off people that are Gen Z. Look at your generation. 
I want you to take an actual hard, hard look at your generation and seriously, the, do they look to be conservative or do they, your fellow Gen Z kids look to be self-centered, wanting things for free and lean especially towards the left? Now, election night, were shenanigans attempted? Yes. James O'Keefe had observers in every state, especially in the battleground states. There were so many observers that were hiding in those polling places that the Democratic Party and the state attorney generals were actually nervous and they actually put out a uh, notice on election night that they were concerned with the number of reports coming out from polling places from O'Keefe's observers who were there watching the whole thing, getting stuff on tape. Now, some of the stuff that happened in New Jersey. Now, for those of you that did not catch this, New Jersey was going for Trump. They were actually talking about on the news, the mainstream media calling New Jersey for Trump. But then magically, after the polls closed, the votes flipped completely to the other direction and the state was given to Harris. What you may not be aware of is that voters in the southern half of New Jersey, this is an area where Trump had the most support in New Jersey, state election officials were deliberately stopping people from voting. They were giving tons of excuses. Voting machines not working, we're out of ink, out of paper, you name it, they used that excuse at each of the polling stations in Southern Jersey. A lot of voters refused to leave and there were voters waiting four to six hours, even after the polls closed, were still waiting for hours and hours and hours into Wednesday morning demanding to come in and cast their ballot because they wanted to cast their vote for Trump. So the question does become, would New Jersey have gone to Trump and not Harris if they had not pulled those shenanigans in the southern part of the state? Now, we also had in Pennsylvania, after the... The ballot counting was closed. The, the election observers left. People stayed behind in Philadelphia at some of the count, ballot counting stations. One of O'Keefe's observers caught on camera two rental trucks arriving at the ballot counting station, opening up the back, and bin after bin after bin of votes were unloaded taken into the counting station, and then magically 50,000 more votes appeared in the count after ballot counting was supposed to have been closed for the night. And these ballots did not flip the state from Trump to Harris, but what they did do is they flipped a lot of races that had been called for Republicans in the Senate and the House, flipped them over to Democrats. So we had those shenanigans going on and reportedly the Republican Party is calling for an investigation on that stuff because, you know, it's on camera. Something was going on after the counting was done and the count changed after those trucks showed up. Also, we had in the Detroit area one of O'Keefe's election observers caught a election judge getting into an accident with a delivery vehicle. And at that accident outside the ballot counting area, caught on tape as someone walked off or several people walked off with two bins which looked like they were filled with ballots. So there's a lot of questions on that. Were these bins, uh, bins that were potential Trump votes that the election drug judge was taking away from the counting station, 
or were these ones that were in the back of that delivery truck that were being brought in to potentially be added into the count after the counting officially was closed. You get the idea. Reportedly, there is an investigation going in on that. Now, we also have in Arizona, has not been called yet, at least at the time of filming here on Sunday. The state has is going more towards Trump. But they're still counting votes and they're counting them at a snail's pace. Now, one of the things that has happened there, Republican election observers have reported that they are finding large numbers of bins of votes which are not being counted. They're checking into the sources of these votes. Where did they come from and so forth. And what they're finding is a lot of these were votes that were cast on election day. They were not run through the tabulators, not run through the counters. They were put in bins and were not counted. Now the Republican Party went to the judge. Judge said, ruled that these votes needed to be counted. They went through, crossed the T's, dotted the I's, did everything they were supposed to, chain of custody and all that stuff to verify that these were legal votes. And these votes are now being tallied in and they're going eight to one for Donald Trump and Kerry Lake. So we could see a uh, massive change there. They were kind of saying that Kerry Lake is defeated, but more and more of these votes are coming in for her, not her opponent. You could see Kerry Lake going to Congress. Carrie Lake is a Republican out of Arizona. Now, we also seen on Election Day, for those of you that missed it, there were multiple reports on Election Day during the day of bomb threats to polling stations. Uh, states that I seen were Georgia, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and they said two other states had gotten reports of bomb threats also, and then they had to close down vote in those polling stations while those stations were getting checked for bombs by bomb squads. And it just so happened that every single one of those polling stations were in Republican districts, districts that were going for Trump overwhelmingly, even on the counts that had already been reported to the state before it had been announced nationally. So there were shenanigans going on, quite a few shenanigans, but there was such an overwhelming majority for Trump, or I should say such an overwhelming majority against the Biden regime, against the globalists, that they couldn't, the shenanigans could not outdo it. So uh, there are people in the left who are going absolutely apeshit, absolutely insane. And I do have some of the stuff here. Now, all of us have seen the videos of them screaming and crying. They're cutting their hair. They're saying that they're no longer going to have sex with men while Trump is in office. They're not going to have children. Well, guess what? You dumb bitches that are doing that stuff, you're ugly as fuck, you're annoying. No guy is probably want, even willing to give you a pity fuck, let alone be willing to fire a uh, hot load of baby batter into the oven to create a kid. So you know what? You are not affecting us at all. You're not bothering at us at all. If anything, we applaud you and we support you in your uh, stance and uh, taking yourselves out of the gene pool because insanity really should not be allowed to procreate. <sighs> now, some of the other stuff that we're seeing uh, everyone seems to be concentrating on the nut jobs having breakdowns. 
they are not the only ones. There are a ton of them out there that are calling for violence. I literally watched a compi compilation video here a couple nights ago, 13 minutes of different tweets and Facebook posts of people calling for Trump to be assassinated, Vance to be assassinated, Elon Musk to be killed, and for people to start massacring Republicans. And plenty of people posting massacring white people and for some reason massacring Hispanic men. Because apparently Hispanic men are so masculine they can't stand a woman president. They can't stand black people, so they cost Harris the election. That's what they're saying in the news, whatever. Now, some I have three tweets here, I think it is, to give you an example for history on some of the stuff that's being posted now. This one up at the top was posted November 6th. It's clear that I really need a gun. Those of you who picked hate over our safety, you are not allies of trans folk. You are not even human. I want to see your faces when the six foot five inch trans, and I'm guessing that's masculine woman, comes kicking in your door in the middle of the night. Fuck the right. This next one here. It's time for a new America, one without petty elections, kill Trump. And this one, I'll bite the bullet and kill Trump, but you all got to break me out. There are tens of thousands of posts like this that are going up every day of people on the list saying that there needs to be violence. And even if just a couple of these fall through with it, that's not good. So everyone needs to keep their head on a swivel. You need to be situationally aware at all times. Because one of these unhinged nut jobs could end up showing to church when you're there to start spraying down the crowd. Or they could potentially go shooting up a school like we've seen in Nashville. Or they could come showing up at a school board meeting. They could show up anywhere and just start shooting people. Apparently, law enforcement is worried about that. And there have been a few mass shootings since Election Day. And as soon as they do investigations into it, they outright say that, no, this is not politically motivated. This is a mental health emergency so could that be they're covering something up or are they telling the truth? I don't know. Now, some of the other things that are going on, the media is going nuts still and they are trying to stoke up people to do something stupid. Um, you had Rachel Maddow talking about there needs to be a resistance formed against Trump and that people need to get violent. She didn't say get violent. She said people need to start acting like pirates and doing what pirates do. So breaking that down to Barney level, she's calling people for violence. You're also seeing posts like that from People from Hollywood, from singers, from athletes who are losing their shit, calling for people to get violent and start attacking Trump supporters because, as this one said up here, they're not even human. You are seeing celebrities fleeing the country left and right right now, if you're not aware of this. One of them that fled soon after the election was Tom Hanks. And why did Tom Hanks flee the country? Oh, yeah, that's right. His name appears multiple times on the Epstein flight logs to Epstein Island. I was going to use the other term for it, but if I do that, YouTube's going to give me a strike. So Tom Hanks decided to run away to try to prevent himself from going to prison for kid diddling. And you know what? A lot of other celebrities are doing the same thing. I'm sure Canada right now has a, a whole bunch of uh, people showing up looking for houses. 
And you know what? Good. Go away. Don't come back. Don't let the door hit you in the ass. Bye-bye. Now, let's get into treasonous stuff that's going on by government officials right now. Some of you may not be aware of this. First off, Jamie Raskin and others are actively talking to people that are going to be in Congress in January about not certifying the election. Will they succeed? Probably not, because that type of thing happens every election where you have a group that always tries doing that, but it never occurs. Uh, reportedly, they're trying to convince people using some legal mumbo jumbo saying that Trump isn't qualified to become president because of the 14th Amendment, I think is what they're saying, because of, you know, insurrection on January 6th of 2021, which he was never charged with, let alone convicted of planning or running an insurrection that day. But they're trying to use that as justification to not allow him to get inaugurated. So just be aware of that. Another thing we are seeing is there is, reportedly a bill has been written up for the House and a bill has been written up for the Senate which will be submitted as soon as Congress sits in session before the inauguration. Now, these bills reportedly strip control of the military from the president and puts control of the military in the hands of Congress. Now, these bills are unconstitutional. According to the Constitution, the president is the commander-in-chief. What he says, the military has to follow the, that order. Unless that order goes contrary to the Constitution and is an unconstitutional order. That is the only time the military can say no to the president. They can voice their concern telling him that, hey, I don't think this is a good decision. But when he gives the order, the military has to follow it. And then it comes into, is the order constitutional or unconstitutional? According to the Constitution, Congress has control of the purse. Congress controls the funding for the military and controls the size. Size of the military is dictated by acts, laws that are passed by Congress. So if Congress believes the military should be smaller, they pass a law on that. If they believe it should be larger, they pass a law on that. That constantly changes each of the new laws overriding the previous one, stating what the current force levels are. Congress is not allowed to control the military. They just control the size and its funding. That's all. And yes, the, the true size of the military is really controlled by the recruiter, but Congress is the one that says you, you should have or need to have X number of people at this time. And then the recruiters have to go out, find those people. The retention NCOs have to work on keeping the people to meet those numbers. Now, in the military itself. Now, I was talking with uh, people I know in the militia the day after the election, and I have more news on that too. <clears throat> I was telling them that it was a sure thing that the Pentagon and Langley, Virginia, the CIA headquarters were having emergency meetings over the election results. And from what I found out from a report that was done by Alex Jones on Friday, he heard from his sources, his little moles in those areas, and that is exactly what they've been doing. Reportedly, the high-ranking members in the Pentagon, so the uh, chief of the Joint Chiefs, the Joint Chiefs of Staffs, department heads, all the services have been meeting nonstop since election night discussing what to do. And so far, 
it has leaked out. They are going to release a statement sometime, probably on Inauguration Day if Trump survives that long. They're going to release a statement that they refuse to follow orders from President Trump because they consider him illegal, not the legitimate president. If that is true, that is treason. And I am telling the officers that and NCOs that are beneath them to immediately arrest them on charges of treason. And then these officers and senior NCOs that are a part of this must be tried under the Uniform Code of Military Justice and federal law for treason. Because these officers, these NCOs, are outright stating they will not follow the will of the people, fuck the people, we follow the regime that's in power and the people that control that regime. That they are loyal to them, not the American people. Now, does this mean we should be going out and attacking troops right now, attacking the National Guard when they're having drills, attacking soldiers on the bases, going out and sniping them when they're training. No, they are not the enemy, at least at this time. The enemy is the senior leadership who is doing treasonous acts right now. And it sounded like along with their refusing, they will refuse to follow Trump's orders. It sounds like they are actively discussing forming a resistance army against Trump and the American people. And I want that to sink in. What you could potentially see then is a bunch of weird orders coming down through the chain of command where people are getting transferred to different units where you'll see the loyalists to the regime in power could potentially get posted to say Fort Bragg or excuse me Fort Liberty well they get posted to the 82nd Airborne they get posted to the 101st and they get posted to Fort Hood where you have 4th ID and 1st Cavalry Division there and see them getting posted to particular bases like where the nuclear storage is at and um, fighter wings, bomber wings, and that type of stuff. See them getting transferred around and then taking the people that they think are patriot, putting them into less important posts, like maybe sending them over to, say, Fort Riley, Kansas, or posting them to the training bases at Fort Benning or Fort Leonard Wood or wherever. If we start seeing that there is weird transfers going on like that, then they are trying to put their people to the locations that have the best equipment that they believe they're going to need for a resistance, for a civil war. And they're taking the people that they do not like, trying to get rid of them, or putting them in locations where they're having older equipment to potentially fight back with. That type of stuff could end up happening, and if it does, People need to let it know. Okay, you need to start posting it that, hey, I got a transfer order to here. My transfer date is 30 days from now. This is unusual, you know, so on and so forth. You need to get the word out on that because we'll need to know. Now, in New York City, I want to mention this. Uh, people are talking about the mayor of New York is showing his support by Trump because he is cutting off the food aid and cash programs to illegals being housed in New York. And reportedly that is happening in other states too. That is not being done as an American America first agenda. That is being done to entice those illegal invaders, those illegal immigrants into starting violence. That is why they're doing that. Cutting off <coughs> the um, goodies that they were being given 
to get them to do something stupid, to convince them that, hey, you were promised this, we're not going to give it, Trump's going to kick you out of the country, the only way you can stay here and get those back is you got to rise up. That's why that stuff's going on. Uh, there is talk that um, Antifa, BLM, and other leftist organizations, they're talking about in January, they're going to do a People's Resistance March, I think was the name for it, into Washington, D.C. The purpose of this march is to get violent to show up in Washington, D.C. and essentially cause riots. Now, the media will say that it's a mostly peaceful protest. It's just people getting out, airing their grievances. Well, they will be airing their grievances by breaking windows, burning businesses, looting, murdering, anything they can to cause chaos. And the talk is that that is going to be done so that when when or if Trump is inaugurated, he will have to do something about that and he will deploy the National Guard. Congress is trying to strip him of the ability to be able to do that, but he orders in the National Guard and then the media is gonna turn around and talk about Trump as being a dictator and is causing the violence by ordering the National Guard to attack these peaceful protesters. Remember, they told us in 2020, it was the summer of love, it was mostly peaceful protests as cities were burning and over $2 billion in damage was done and thousands of people were killed. No, I don't have the names of the people who were killed, but reportedly thousands were killed across the country, along with tens of thousands were injured during those mostly peaceful protests in the summer of 2020. So we got that in play too. And I'm going to put out there for militia right now, talking with people I know in units in my state, in my area. They are already reporting that their units consider Trump winning the election is the final victory in the war and they are disbanding their units. They're no longer going to train. They're no longer going to prep because it's no longer needed. Trump won the election, so now it's rainbows and unicorns, and everything's going to be perfect. I just gave you a whole bunch of stuff here on how the left is gearing up for war against us. This is not the time to say the war is over. The war is not over. The election was just a single battle in a long campaign and a long war. That's all it was. General Flynn, who was part of the first Trump administration, he did an inter interview, I think it was on Wednesday, and he said he is telling people he knows they need to think of it as the Normandy invasion. All they did was create a beachhead. They created a foothold in enemy territory. The war was not done. There was still a lot of fighting before victory was declared. I've been telling people before I even heard that interview, talking to them in the militia, telling them that the victory on Tuesday, Election Day, was not the final victory. Think of it as the Battle of Midway. Before the Battle of Midway in 42, we were being hit with defeat after defeat after defeat after defeat across the Pacific. But then we concentrated our forces. We won a victory at Midway. The war was not over, but we hurt the enemy bad. And we still had the island hopping campaign that we had to do for the next three years before the enemy was defeated. That is where we're at right now. The Trump election was just a single victory of one battle in a long, drawn-out war. The globalists still have control of the government. They still have control of most governments around the world. And they are not going to allow this little victory to defeat them. Now, there is talk right now 
that uh, people are talking to the Trump team and they're pointing out to him that they're pointing out the threats being made online against Trump calling for assassination. And they're also pointing out that it would be very, very easily now for the regime in power to do something like take out Trump one, his airplane with Trump on board, take it out with a surface to air missile and then blame it on Iran. Because remember, they were talking about that just a couple months ago, how there was Iranian hit teams in the United States with man pads, man portable air defense systems, SAMs, surface to air missiles. And that these teams are out there to assassinate Trump. So basically they were telling us what one of their game plans is. Trump reportedly did request Air Force aircraft to be in the air around Trump one when he's in flight, takes off and lands. And those Air, air Force aircraft have missile detection and countermeasure systems on them. The Biden White House and Kamala was laughing about that, but what he was doing, he was reacting to a threat. Now, I know some people are telling me right now, well, security guy, they already captured or recovered, found surface-to-air missiles down on the border. No, they didn't. What was, and I looked this up, what was found down on the border was RPG rockets, rocket-propelled grenades. What are RPGs? These are primarily anti-tank rockets. They are not anti-aircraft. An RPG is not a Stinger or a Red Eye or an SA-7 or an SA-16 or a Silkworm or a Blowpipe or any others of those, that category of air defense system. Okay, an RPG is a fucking bazooka rocket, essentially. If you need it broken down to Barney level, that is what an RPG is. It is meant to take out a tank. Can it be used against an aircraft? Yes, it can. The Viet Cong were extremely adept on that in the 1960s and 1970s. And we've seen that happen also with Somalis in Mogadishu in 93. The Iraqis did the same thing. The Afghans did the same thing. But an RPG is not a surface-to-air missile. It is just a rocket. And they are primarily effective against helicopters, not so much fixed-wing aircraft unless you somehow magically get one off and a fixed-wing aircraft flies right into the path of it and they connect at just the right moment. Or you use that RPG against the aircraft on the ground. It is not a SAM. Uh, there is also talk that... Uh, <coughs> there is talk that people are warning Trump that he may want to have food tasters because it's very possible they could try poisoning him. So... The Trump security team is aware of a lot of these threats. They're trying to counter this, this stuff. They're trying to keep them alive through to Inauguration Day. And then once it's past Inauguration Day, it becomes a lot harder to kill them. Not impossible. I mean, Christ, they did it against Kennedy in 63. They tried against Reagan in, what was it, 82? I think it was. They tried killing him then, and it didn't work out too well. So... But it just, it, it's harder to do after he's in office compared to now. And I will say once again, if Trump is killed, think that that is probably the start of a war. Okay? So if we get reports Trump is assassinated, is it go time? Probably. It'll depend on the situation on the ground at that time and what the reaction of the government is, who they say the enemy is, who they are going after. And I will point out right now, for those of you that are not aware of this, reportedly the Department of Justice and the IRS 
are going after people that Trump is considering for his cabinet. Uh, one of these people is reportedly a Whole Foods grocer or owner of a Whole Foods grocer chain down in Texas. This guy was one of the pioneers of that. He and his father started this business back in the 60s, reportedly. And, you know, dad died. This guy is still in charge of it. He's been a uh, advocate for clean foods, for removing the chemicals from the food products. He is well known to RFK Jr. as a champion inside that area. And the talk was... Trump was considering making this guy the secretary of the Department of Agriculture. And er, a couple days ago, the FBI raided his home, arrested him, confiscated his computers and so forth. And he's being charged with possible computer crimes. And they're saying tax evasion, even though he's filing, he's filed taxes. They're saying that, well, we believe he committed some type of fraud. So, and there was talk that one or two other people had also been targeted over the past few days. I don't remember who they were. These were all people that Trump was looking at for possible candidates for the cabinet, had not been announced officially yet, and they're being targeted. So this does kind of prove what was seen in uh, 2016, where Trump out, Trump said after 2016, once he was in office, that the Department of Justice was tapping his phones, listening in on his conversations. It looks like the same thing is going on now, and the regime in power is trying to take out his cabinet picks before they're officially picked. So there is stuff going on. Things are not as happy as you may believe. So stop trying to break your arm, patting yourself on the back. The war is not over. We've only won a single battle. You need to keep training. We've bought ourselves probably two to three months here of a reprieve that you can continue getting ready, keep working on your training, keep working on your physical fitness. My back's in a lot better shape now, so I can finally start getting back into doing physical fitness again. Once I'm done puking. Oh, Christ. So I might end up cutting this a little bit shorter here, but uh, over winter, keep training. It's a lot harder to train in, worth, in winter, but the payoffs are greater. It's more worth it. Continue doing marksmanship over winter. It's harder. It'll be worth it. Continue doing physical fitness over winter. Do what you can. Maybe you won't go out running. Hey, try cross-country skiing. You know, try hiking through the woods in winter. Hiking through snow sucks ass. It takes a lot of effort. Another thing you can do, go to the pool. Try swimming. One thing that I used to do to uh, prepare for deployments is uh, I would go to a pool with the girlfriend and uh, I would have her hold on to my back as I would try walking from one end to the pool to the other as fast as I can. And as it got easier for me to do it, I would tell her do things like, you know, spread your legs apart to act like a parachute or something like that to add more drag to make it harder to do it. By doing that type of exercise, you build up a considerable amount of leg strength and you seriously build up lung strength too. That's another thing for you to look forward to look uh, work on. Also, strength training. Don't forget doing strength training. Don't forget working on flexibility over winter also. Don't just sit around, be a sloth, filling up on junk foods over winter, pretending you're a bear. Get out there keep training, keep getting prepared. We probably only have a couple months until things start getting stupid. I've told people here <coughs> that over winter, fill up as many cache containers as they can, buy as much material as you can when you get those Christmas bonuses 
after you get the gifts for family members, take a bunch of that money, put it into more rations, put it into more ammunition, more cleaning supplies, more medical supplies. And then as soon as the ground starts to thaw in spring, just take the stuff out there as quick as you can. In spring, it's harder. You're gonna leave prints on the, brown, on the ground. So maybe do it right before there's supposed to be a major rainfall. Before you're supposed to have rain showers that are supposed to last a day or two because it's springtime. That's the time to go out there, get those cases in the ground so that as things get hotter here, as we get into spring, hotter as in temperature and also anger across this country, you're better prepared so when the final shot is fired that this is the moment stuff's kicking off now the left has declared war against the american people against the country officially they're shooting people in the streets you'll be ready for it you'll be in better prepared for the long campaign that will begin then we will go out of the start of the phase of the war into the actual active component which will last anywhere from seven to ten years statistically you need to have a hell of a lot of food, a lot of medical supplies, a lot of cleaning supplies for your weapons, spare parts, ammunition, spare magazines, spare gear. You need to have that out there. Get as much as you can. Look into the 510 program from the Michigan militia. Find out on that. Go over to libertytreeradio.4mg. Listen to Mark Kernke's broadcast to learn a little bit more advanced lessons on guerrilla warfare and resistance. Learn as much as you can over winter. Prepare as much as you can because who knows what's going to happen in a few months. But to me, it's looking like it's not going to be good. And we're potentially going to be seeing a repeat of Yugoslavia in the early 1990s. Tons of different factions, everyone warring against everyone else over minor fucking differences. And that's just going to make it that much worse. Am I worried because there is no organized resistance on the right right now? No. Because if we had an organization for resistance on the right, how hard would it be for the enemy to infiltrate it right now and then when they do launch their first attacks, they come in and roll up the leadership, roll up as many of the group as they can, the individual units, at least take out the ones that are willing to fight, the ones that are wishy-washy, questionable, the summer summertime patriots, just let them go because they're not going to do nothing. You take out the winter soldiers. We do not want an organization right now beyond local level organized with people in your area point out that the war is not over all we had was a small victory and the worst of it is still yet to come it's going to get worse before it gets worse as risky Krisky used to say now for all my engineer brothers and the patriot and militia movements and everyone across the country keep your head on a swivel maintain situational awareness and always remember, essayons, let us try.